everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening to learn more about the CBRD's draft 2024 budget. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge that we are gathering virtually this evening from across the traditional unceded territories of the Cowichan, Malahat, Sabalis, Halalt, Penelicate, Stamanus, Lyaxon, Paquichan, Dididat, and Pachadat peoples. Uh, I'll introduce my fellow colleagues that are here this evening. We have Tracy Bowen, our Chief Financial Officer, who will be delivering the budget presentation. We're also joined by Danielle Miles Wilson, our CAO. Uh, as well as Ian Peidel, our manager of human resources. And we have uh, Director Hilary Abbott representing Area D, Couch and Bay in attendance with us as well. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, for those who haven't joined us for a virtual budget meeting in the past, uh, a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, the meeting is recorded and will be posted to the CVRD website on the same page where the links for these meetings are for reviewing uh, after the fact. Uh, for the format of the meeting, again, a presentation by Ms. Bowen, followed by a question and answer period. At any time, you can start posing questions through the Q&A field that you'll find in the bottom right-hand side of your screen. This isn't to be confused with the comment field, which is what you would use if you wanted to send a message to any one of the panelists. Uh, when we get to that portion of the, uh, of the meeting, we'll go through the questions in the order to receive them. And following that time permitting, we can go through the list of attendees and unmute uh, you individually in case anyone has further questions or had trouble using the Q&A function. Uh, with all that being said, I will turn it over to Ms. Bowen for the presentation. Are you seeing the, the presentation up? Okay. Yes, we are. Okay. So welcome to the presentation of the 2020, 2024 budget overview. The Cache Valley Regional District has four municipalities and nine electoral areas. And for 2024, we have 178 services. There are a number of competing challenges and expectations that the board must balance when setting the 2024 budget, including how to meet the needs of the public under increasing financial constraints, increased downloading from other levels of government, resulting in increased pressures to provide additional services, aging infrastructure and increasing construction costs that exceed consumer price inflation, legislation changes, and higher requirements of standards of care that put increasing cost pressures on existing services and increasing non-controllable expenditures such as hydro and insurance. The CVRD provides a variety of services to different partners and therefore the impact of our budgeting process on each electoral area or municipality is different. For example, the cost for the average home in electoral area D, which represents or participates in 41 functions is $1,524.63. But the average home in Duncan, which participates in 24 functions, is $624.24. And Area D also has six specified area services encompassing a variety of services such as street lighting, drainage, and fire protection. To com Complicate matters, some services are provided directly by the CVRD, others in partnership with other organizations, and some take the form of grants to organizations that provide the services to the area. The CVRD does not provide education, sidewalks, curbs, gutters, and roads, policing, health care, or highways. The only provincial service or municipality in the case of roads is, and policing is North Cowichan. Most of our services, services taxation is allocated based on assessment value. Each member, municipality, and electoral area's share is calculated based on assessed values that are provided by BC assessment and within the distribution between property classes is determined using a fixed ratio that is mandated under provincial legislation. 
Requisition represented almost 30%, 36% of the total budget for 2023. The funding for each service is determined in the establishment bylaw. And with so many services, there's a wide variety of funding mixtures used. We can, however, broadly characterize the main types of service funding as regional, electoral area, sub-regional, and specified area. So regional services are funded based on an assessment for all 13 jurisdictions within the regional district and are typically services that benefit the entire region, such as solid waste management or general government. Electoral area services are specified to the rural areas only and are therefore shared by all participating electoral areas as on an assessment basis with no municipality funding participation. An example of this is community planning where the CVD performs the function for the electoral areas but not the municipalities. The X on the chart indicates that the entire area participates while the O is a portion of the area. Many of our services are sub regional in nature in that they provide a service for certain areas within the CVRD and funding is shared by those participating normally on an assessment basis. An example of this is the couch and community center. Again, on this graph, there's the X means everybody participates. The O means only a portion of that area participates. Specified areas are set up to fund services that are provided to a number of properties that do not represent the entire electoral area and are different in that these functions are established in response to a petition by property owners to provide service. A service area is established to encompass the properties that receive the service, such as street lighting or fire services. While taxation is a major component of the CVRD's revenue base, the CVRD has a few other revenue streams. Non-taxation revenue streams that are considered as part of the budget process include user fees and charges, curbside pickup and utilities, permits and licensing fees, building permits and subdivision fees. Reserve funds, the CVRD accumulates operating reserves to protect against variances and unexpected expenditures from year to year and capital reserves for its long-term asset management needs. Grants, where possible, projects are funded through the use of grants, and borrowing can, can only be used for capital purposes. The CVRD has in recent years taken advantage of the low interest rates to borrow short-term in order to fund project purchases, but also borrows long-term for larger, longer-term capital projects. As mentioned, Services funded with other revenue sources include the community health network, municipal MFA debt, curbside garbage and recycling services, sewer, water, and some street lighting services. The current budget approach is incremental, meaning that the current activities and staffing levels are considered as core and used as a baseline for the upcoming budget. This approach uses core expenditures as the basis for the preparation of the draft budget with requests to changes to existing service levels being treated as supplemental requests to the commissions and committees for their consideration. Core expenditures are defined as those that are required to maintain the current levels of service, uh, staffing services and capital, including reallocation of service so resources within operational budgets that do not require an increase in requisition. Supplemental requests for the purpose of budgeting are defined as items that are in addition to current staffing and or service levels and any capital that require an increase to requisition or user fees. These include purchases or construction of new capital, the addition of part-time full-time staffing positions, or changes to programs or services requiring increases to user fees or requisition. For the 2024 budget, staff did receive a mandate from the board. The mandate was for 3.5%. This did not include regional recreation, the library, or transit services. Out of the 178 functions that we have, 92 of the functions were able to meet this mandate. 
The board has had budget meetings in 2023 and 2024 and has considered all supplemental requests. With the decisions made to date, the budget includes a requisition increase of 16.08%. So as you can see on the slide, 8.88% is the existing services, 6.17 is for regional recreation, 0.77 is for the library, and 0.26 is for the transit. And also the change in the cost per 100,000 from 2023 to 2024 will range from $8.78 to $35.61. The board will then hold a meeting on February 8th and 9th to review all decisions that have been made and process uh, propose any change changes to the budget before the financial plan bylaw is brought forward at the end of February. The increase to requisition is discussed as a total number. However, as mentioned previously, the effects of individual properties varies based on a number of factors, including property assessment and property location. Only the participants in a service area contribute to the cost of providing those services. This slide shows the impact of each municipality and electoral area of the proposed 2024 budget, which includes core and supplementals. In electoral areas D and E, City of Duncan and Municipality of North Cowichan, the largest changes are for solid waste complex, general government, and regional recreation. The electoral areas will also see an increase for the Vancouver Island Regional Library and electoral area services. In area D, the average home will see an increase of $21.92. This chart, which is available on the CVRD website, shows how the tax requisition is broken down by function. In area E, the average home will see an increase of 116.85. In the city of Duncan, the average home will see an increase of $68.76. North Couchin, north end of North Couchin homeowners will see an increase of $256.97. And south end residents who participate in the liquid waste management function would see an increase of $94.67. So what does this mean for us? So how will a change in your assessment affect your property taxes? If your assessment is lower than the average, your property tax increase will be lower. If your assessment is higher than the average, your property tax increase will be higher. The most important factor is not how much your assessment value has changed, but how it has changed compared to the average in your property class. So on this slide, we've also put in a YouTube video that is from BC Assessment that does um, explains a bit more about the breakdowns. For more information can be found on the CVRD draft budget website. A number of detailed schedules are available on the CVRD website providing total budget information as well as detailed financial information on each of the services. The majority of the schedules look at changes in property taxation. Parcel tax information is provided in separate schedules. Schedule A presents the change in tax requisition. It only shows services that have a change and details the amount of the change for the service. Down at the bottom is the total difference between the general tax requisition of 2023 and, and that of 2024. This does not include the change for local area services, which affect only specified areas. Schedule B shows a change in tax requisition by jurisdiction. The change due to other jurisdiction column reflects the increase in the library requisition. Also down at the bottom is the increase in the local services area tax, such as the fire services. Schedule C shows the change in requisition going back to 2017. Schedule D has a page for each jurisdiction. It lists only the services that that area participates in and shows the change for that service. Down at the bottom, it includes the local service area taxes applicable to that jurisdiction and the change in those as well. 
Schedule E also has a page for each jurisdiction and shows the impact of the average home in that area. Schedule F is a summary of the short and long-term debt. The schedule on the website has not been updated for 2023 debt as we haven't finished borrowing for the year yet. The schedule will be updated once year end has been completed. Similar to Schedule F, Schedule G has not been updated for 2023. Finance did not usually transfer funds to capital reserves until the end of the year. The schedule will be updated when year end funding transactions have been completed. Schedule G has a portion for capital reserves and a portion for operating reserves. Again, the schedule will be updated closer to the end of the year when operating results are known. Schedule H shows assessment by jurisdiction for three years. The 2024 completed role is used for the 2024 budget. Schedule I also has a page for each jurisdiction and shows how the requisition for an area is split between the property classes. Schedule J shows the cost of a $100,000 home and shows the portion of the total assessment represented by each area. Parcel tax for sewer and water systems are shown in Schedule K. And user fees for sewer and water systems shown in Schedule L. It is important to note that an increase in a parcel tax for or user fee for a service does not necessarily mean an increase to the property owner. In many cases, new properties have been added to the service areas, thus increasing the total amount collected without having to impact on individual properties. These are the detailed budget schedules available on our website. We also have more specific details on individual services. For each service, there is a summary sheet. It gives a description of the service, lists the amount of being requisitioned for 2024, the maximum amount that can be requisitioned if applicable, and shows the split between the participating areas. This is followed by the proposed five-year plan for the function. Lastly is the budget detail from our accounting software showing the actual expenses for 2021 and 2022, the budget for 2023 and 2024. All of this is available on our website to provide as much information as possible. And that is the end of the presentation. Thanks so much, Tracy. We'll now move into the question and answer portion of the meeting. Uh, do not see any questions submitted through the Q&A function. Uh, I would welcome a question from uh, Director Abbott representing uh, Area D if he has one. Thank you, Mr. Schumacher. Um, I am pleased that uh, Area D has such a small increase per average household. I think you said um, $21.92. Is there an explanation is it were we contributing to recreation facilities in Cary Park at Cary Park and uh, the community center already? Is that perhaps what contributes to that um, attractive increase? Yes, you do. Area D does contribute was contributing to um, to the rec centers already. I'm just trying to get back to your slide. And and well presented, Tracy. I think that's your first presentation as the CFO. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So you had a lot of decreases in your stuff. The biggest ones came from the Cary Park and the Couch and Community Center, which um, just about pretty much cleared out exactly what the original rec increase was. So that's why you guys were so low. And within about two more year budget years. Um, we won't necessarily across the CBRD. Will we see a, a leveling out of taxes, or is it <clears throat> once once people get accustomed to paying that much on their property, will it just continue in perpetuity? Once once regional rec becomes there's a three year um, window. Yeah, then it, then it, everything at the end of. 
So 2025 budget will be the one that will be the full year where there won't be the carry park and not to offset. It will be all will be regional rec. Okay. Okay. And you've pointed, um, sorry, maybe others have questions, but I see chair stone is on or he was, um, there, um, I, I just went quickly back to the budget file. The um, I'd love I'd love to watch the recording again and pause it and look at at, at those various files. But I could probably slides. I bet I bet I could also just go to the page that you pointed us to in order to be able to explain because I I have this premonition that very soon people are going to see numbers like. Six, I've forgotten what the aggregate was for the area and, and they're going to go apoplectic over. What what are we doing at the CVRD and, and it's going to be hard to translate or communicate that. Part of this is regional rec library and transit. They won't hear that what they'll hear is 16 or 18%. Yeah, so right now the, the rate is 16. 16.08 and that's because you guys have uh, approved everything that is the unless changes happen on the 8th and the 9th that is what you're looking at for an increase but then again but again it depends on the area what you pay into how it affects um and where the people fall within their average what their property values are that it there's a lot of factors that play into it so the percentage don't always correlate to what they're going to see. Uh, just to uh, just add some amplification to the the cumulative number of sixteen point zero eight. Uh, less less things like uh, library, regional recreation, and um, and transit, because that equates to around ten percent, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Eight point eight eight. Eight point so eight eight. Just under nine. Yeah. Thank you. The other thing too, I, I can add just to the director's comment um, is that, um, like we, you know, going through this budget process, we were we've we've outlined, and Tracy's been really good at outlining all the inflationary pressures that we were experiencing and that every local government is experiencing. And if you take a look at at the um, the budgets taking place across the province, particularly in other regional districts, we actually are are matching up to be kind of in the middle of the pack. Um, and that's that's interesting because we, and and as Tracy has pointed out as well, ninety two percent of our services, I believe, actually have come in at that very low mandate of three and a half percent. There were, I believe, sixteen business cases for functions that were presented um, that were not able to meet it for a variety of reasons um, that were were. Um, presented to the board and so um, this is actually a, a fairly good news story in um, in how we've lined up both comparatively across the province um, but also in, um, the fact that we're implementing a fairly significant regional service with regional rec I believe that will take us to the end of the meeting uh, just to reiterate as Tracy stated multiple times but uh, the budget will be going back to special committee of the whole meetings on February 8th and 9th uh, for anybody who's watching this uh, and is interested in tuning in to see uh, where that discussion might go. Uh, always appreciate uh, in-person participation as well as virtual participation in our public meetings. Uh, and just a final thought. Sorry, my lights just went out. Uh, a final thought is just that if, uh, if anybody watching this has uh, some follow-up uh, questions and wants to reach out to our finance staff, we have an email which is budgeting at cbrd.bc.ca uh, where you can send an email query. Oh, Tracy, did I get it wrong? Yeah, it's just budget at cbrd.bc.ca. Budget, there we go. Budget. So I'll thank everyone again for tuning in uh, and attending and your attention, whether it's live or after the fact, much appreciated and wish everyone a great evening. Thanks to our panelists and elected officials for their time. Thank you for making this available. And thank you, Tracy, for all the hard work that you've put into preparing this presentation.